With hundreds of dinosaur movies and TV shows out there, it's no surprise that there have been tons of misconceptions about what a dinosaur really sounded like. So, we're going to use science and research to roughly reveal what sounds these nine dinosaurs actually made. Spoiler alert, it's nothing like what you'd expect. For centuries, paleontologists argued that dinosaurs were simply large, cold-blooded reptiles that made roaring sounds with their mouths wide open. <laughs> And although the roaring sounds we hear in Jurassic Park are terrifying enough, dinosaurs actually sounded a lot creepier than that. See, the closest living relatives to dinosaurs are actually birds and crocodiles. And guess what? Neither of those animals actually roar. Crocodiles rumble like this. And birds? Well, birds make all kinds of noises, from the booms of ostriches to the clattering sounds a shoebill stork makes. Although the minds behind Jurassic Park were trying to be as realistic as possible, they were still working with a limited amount of outdated knowledge and just wanted to scare an entertained audience. So what did the T-Rex actually sound like? Despite the size of its jaw, there's logically no reason for a T-Rex to roar and scare away its prey. This brings us to Julia Clark, a prominent paleontologist and evolutionary biologist who has conducted extensive research on dinosaur vocalizations. In a groundbreaking study, Clark and her team analyzed a fossilized syrinx from a bird species named Vega Vega E dating back approximately 66 to 68 million years ago. This is the oldest known fossil evidence of a possible dinosaur vocal organ, and also gives us a great estimate of when birds developed syrinxis. In order to understand why this is relevant to dinosaur vocalizations, we need to learn a little more about birds and their entirely unique vocal organ, the syrinx. In most animals and humans, the way sounds are produced is through vocal folds present at the base of the larynx. But birds have a completely unique organ to produce sounds which possibly dates back to their prehistoric ancestors, dinosaurs. And if birds have a searing 67 million years ago, it could be possible that their ancestors, dinosaurs, obviously, could have the same vocal organ. Because no fossils of a dinosaur searings have been found, Clark says we should focus on the sounds living dinosaurs and their relatives make. And that's these guys. Professor Clark argues that we know four things that tell us what T-Rexes could sound like. For example, in living dinosaurs, birds, and cousins of living dinosaurs, crocodiles, closed mouth sounds are more common as size increases. Nearly all big birds, think emus and ostriches, make closed mouth sounds like grunts and booms. On top of that, we know that many birds have sound shapers like flexible tracheas, resonating chambers, beaks, head crests, among other body parts that modify the sounds created by their syrinx. This is how ostriches change the shape of their trachea to make booming noises. <laughs> These sound shapers were also present in extinct dinosaurs, like these resonating chambers found in Corythosaurus, Lambiosaurus, and Parasaurolophus in 1981. Considering how large dinosaurs are, these chambers would emphasize low frequency sounds. Scientists have observed a correlation between large body sizes and low frequency sounds. This means bigger animals, like elephants, can make sounds that go below the range of human hearing. These are called infrasounds, which we can't hear, but instead feel. So, by putting all of that together, we can safely assume that this is not how T-Rexes look when they're out hunting for dinner. Instead of a ground shaking roar, T-Rexes might have communicated with low frequency rumbles. These sounds could have been more about vibration, felt rather than heard, given the massive body sizes involved. If you're wondering what that sounds like, Professor Clark and naturalist Chris Packham came up with this terrifying sound that you can feel rather than hear. For example, the sounds we thought an Ankylosaurus would make were something like this. It 
that just make sense. With their armored bodies, spiked sides, and skull-crushing tails, Ankylosaurus needed a roar as tank-like and powerful as their build. But this sound actually turned out to be far from the truth. Just recently, in 2023, a fossilized Ankylosaur larynx was unearthed that tore apart our previous understanding of how these magnificent beasts used to vocalize. For the longest time, we thought Ankylosaurs were either usually quiet or grunted like crocodiles, but now we know that they were capable of far more complex sounds. Now we're one step closer to figuring out that they probably made sounds that resembled large modern birds, like emus and ostriches. They could have also made honking sounds that were used for territorial calls or mating. Some scientists believe they used to make grunting noises that resemble what cassowary would sound like when they're agitated. This fossil's discovery completely changed the way we used to perceive these ancient monolithic beasts. But why exactly do we think dinosaurs sound so different from the way they actually do? Figuring out how dinosaurs sound is a lot trickier than just remixing sounds other animals make. Despite what you might think, there's a lot of science that goes behind figuring out what prehistoric life sounded like. A recent interdisciplinary field of research, called paleoacoustics, helped us piece things together. Once archaeologists uncover a fossil, the specimen is then subjected to all sorts of tests and procedures to learn more about its origin and the creature it belonged to. Since these ancient fossils were extremely fragile, scientists were too keen on cracking open a bone or skull they'd find just for research's sake. After all, less than 5% of all known living species are represented in the fossil record, and less than one-tenth of 1% 1 of all species that have ever lived became fossils. That means the odds of finding a fossil in the wild are astoundingly low. But, thanks to CT scans, scientists were able to map out the insides of a fossil in a non-destructive way. Now with new high-tech imaging, we're understanding how this dinosaur evolved over millions of years. The machine can see further inside the fossil than a standard x-ray machine, and it's able to do that without having to break the delicate fossil open. Scientists have even mapped out the insides of a prehistoric egg. Using this technology, they were able to view the nasal cavities and cranial crests of dinosaurs to somewhat figure out how these animals produce sound. With artificial intelligence and deep learning methods, scientists have further refined the process of discovering what dinosaurs really sounded like. After they finish figuring out how, they figure out what kind of sounds we should expect something like a T-Rex to make. This involves considering animal behavior, since the context in which sounds are made, such as parents communicating with children, is also important. That's where zoologists and ethologists weigh in with their extensive research on modern-day animals. These scientists dedicate their lives to learning about animal behavior in the wild and their basic anatomy. When fossils were discovered during the 17th century, scientists were documenting and theorizing how they evolved into their modern-day counterparts. Parts. They did that by figuring out the key features fossils had that resembled the animals we know and love, including us. After observing tons of birds over the last few centuries, humans figured out that their bodies have evolved to act as resonating chambers since communication was an essential part of their survival. This evolutionary trait was something birds actually inherited from the dinosaurs of the past. For example, the Parasaurolophus is a very famous dinosaur that had scientists confused for decades. With their bills that resemble a duck's and their bizarre heads, these ancient herbivores were shrouded in mystery. It all started in 1995, when archaeologists found a well-preserved Parasaurolophus skull that featured a conical, curvy bone structure jutting out from the back. This alien-like bone structure made people theorize whether the crest was actually meant to regulate the body's internal heat or help the animal smell better. But CT scans soon revealed that the crest's purpose was to guard something far less outlandish than what we previously imagined. It was a complicated collection of nasal passages that allowed the animal to vocalize in a very unique way. Soon after that, several studies came out that supported the idea that these beasts evolved this way to maximize their ability to communicate with others like them in complex ways. In 2024, Hong Jun Lin, a student from New York University, went one step further and created a device that reconstructed the dinosaur skull with a series of pipes and used low-frequency vibrations to determine that Parasaurolophus might have sounded like a heavy trumpet. These are two possible sounds they could have made, with the first sounding more like whales, while the second example sounds a lot more musical.
It's safe to assume that every dinosaur had bodies that were equipped with unique resonating chamber-like structures, just like the Parasaurolophus and Ankylosaurus. Since these creatures existed millions of years ago, most of our assumptions regarding what they would sound like are still pure speculation. Here's what some of the other famous archosaurs probably sounded like, according to the experts. One of Jurassic Park's biggest flaws was the way that it butchered its interpretation of the Velociraptor by having them open doors and practically roar like lions. They used dolphin screams, walrus bellows, and mating tortoises to emulate what they would sound like in the films. <laughs> Unfortunately, since a velociraptor's snout was almost 60% of its entire skull, the animal most likely communicated through closed mouth calls such as hisses and clicks, something like this. The terrifying semi-aquatic Spinosaurus, with its elongated snout and snail-like structure on its back, is perhaps one of the creepiest dinosaurs to ever walk on land. The sounds we thought it would make were something like this. Unlike most of its other dinosaur buddies, Utah raptors might have been able to vocalize better using open-mouthed calls, like the Australian bustards do. In fact, scientists speculate that all dromaeosaurids, aka running lizards, were capable of open mouth calling. Utah raptors, specifically, had skulls with expanded nasal passages and openings. If they were alive today, you'd probably hear something like this before they rip you apart with their serrated teeth. Although, there are some vocal interpretations that might suggest they made more complicated noises, considering their smaller size and large skull. Similarly, the Dryptosaurus, tearing lizard, was an archosaur that was also capable of opening its mouth in order to terrify the local population. They were formidable back in the day, and would have probably sounded like a Eurasian bittern booming whenever they wanted to attract a mate or keep their rivals away. The kind of sounds a trumpeter swan makes may also be what Dryptosaurus might have sounded like during mating season. Some scientists speculate that the class of dinosaurs Dryptosaurus belonged to were surprisingly very chatty. This is what they could have sounded like while communicating with other members of their species. <laughs> Either way, your chances of survival if you ever encountered one in the wild would have been practically zero, regardless of how docile these dangerous carnivores would have sounded. One of the most unique and quite possibly the most common dinosaurs during late Cretaceous North America, the Triceratops, was a herbivore that possessed a three-foot-long resonating chamber in the shape of its skull. 
Forget about the 12,000 pound build it had to lug around. Three Horned Skull was large enough to have it produce some of the most incredible noises you can envision. With complex nasal passages, it was most likely able to produce sounds like elephants usually do at a lower frequency. At a higher frequency, they could have also made sounds that resemble the grunting of an African hippo. Or the playful whines and grumblings of a sociable rhino. Despite being herbivores, triceratops were exceptionally dangerous animals, and deeply territorial as well. Imagine hearing something like this behind you in the jungle. Lastly, Quetzalcoatlus was a fascinating beast since it's the second largest flying animal we've unearthed so far. Obviously, something this colossal, with a wingspan of about 30 to 39 feet, would probably make a sound that could be heard for miles. And if by any chance you manage to anger the beast, the last thing you'll probably hear is some seagull, but from your nightmares. This sound clip is a collection of low frequency rumbles and honks that have been engineered to sound like it's coming from an animal far larger than the ones who produced it. With its absolutely gigantic toothless beak, it probably communicated with other members of its species the same way most giant birds do, by clacking the upper and lower parts of their beaks together. Imagine something like this, but significantly louder. 